Welcome back, everybody. According to a standard English dictionary, idolatry is defined as the worship of a physical object as God or a moderate attachment or devotion to something. To see how Islam is idolatry, let's start in the Quran. Why has not a sign been sent down to him from his Lord? He is only a plain warner. Why has not a sign sent to him from his Lord? You are only a plain warner. Why has not a sign been sent down upon him from his Lord? He's only a warner and a guide. Why is not a sign sent down? Say, surely I am the plain warner. Nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except the ancients rejected them. Why does he not bring a sign? Let him bring us a sign like the former prophets. I'm only a plain warner. A plain warner, one of the warners. Why are not signs sent down? Say, I'm only a plain warner. He is only a warner. You are naught but a warner. I am only a warner. Naught is revealed to me save that I am a plain warner. I am nothing but a plain warner. I am a plain warner. You are only a warner. You are only a reminder. According to the Quran, the messenger was not sent to work any miracles either. He was just a bearer of good news and a warner. He recited, communicated, purified, and taught. Once again, reciting, purifying, and teaching, he's a giver of good news and a warner. He's also called a witness, a bearer of good news and a warner, a bearer of good news and a warner, a bearer of good news and a warner, and a witness, a bearer of good news and a warner. It's hard to imagine how much more explicit the Quran could be, but when we look at the Muslim sources, Muhammad was anything but a plain warner. Some of his miracles include water gushing out from his fingers. But any hadith that contradicts the Quran must be disregarded, right? Right, unless it exalts Muhammad, and so the miracles continue. He placed the child in his lap and commanded for the dates to be brought. He chewed them and then put the saliva in his mouth. First thing which went into his stomach was the saliva of Allah's messenger. And of course, if that isn't gross enough, Muhammad put his tongue directly in a boy's mouth. And here we see the miraculous spit of Muhammad, thirst never overcame me, after sucking the prophet's tongue. Some Muslims apparently offended that Muhammad didn't put his tongue in their mouths, were still able to catch his spittle and rub it on their faces and skin. Other Muslims, apparently deprived altogether of Muhammad's miraculous spit were still able to lick up some of his blood as well as drink some of his urine. To the woman who drank his urine, Muhammad said, you will never complain of a stomach ache. He did not order any of them to wash their mouths out, nor did he forbid them to do it again. Oh, but that hadith is weak, isn't it? The hadith of the woman drinking the urine is sound. And of course, Muhammad had miraculous bowel movements when he wanted to defecate the earth split open and swallowed up his feces and urine and it gave off a fragrant smell. So let's compare. According to the Quran, Muhammad is only a plain warner over and over and over. No signs were sent down. Nothing prevented us from sending signs down except that the ancients rejected them. According to Muslims, Muhammad had miraculous hands, spit, urine, and bowel movements. If you're willing to contradict the word of your God to exalt a man, that certainly qualifies as excessive devotion, one reason that Islam is idolatry. Now, what about the name Muhammad? Well, it's looking more and more like this is not a proper name, but a religious title, meaning he who is praised, bestowed only later on the Arabian prophet by his followers. Now, if that's the case, then that means that the occurrences of Muhammad in the Quran are later additions, and indeed that case has been made, but that's a topic for another video. Let's go to the names of Allah. And we see that one of them is the one who is praised. So let's compare one of the names of Allah, the one who is praised, and the meaning of Muhammad, he who is praised. Speaking of names, how many does Allah have and how many names does Muhammad have? That's right, they both have 99 names. So do you want to confuse a Muslim? Just say the praised one and ask them if you're talking about Muhammad or Allah. They won't be able to tell you. There are different shahadas in the early years of Islam, as we've discussed in previous videos. The early Shahada did not originally contain Muhammad. We see this in coins and inscriptions and some early Hadith like this one, which just says, La ilaha illallah. As a side note, whenever you see these more primitive statements, there's a chance you're dealing with at least some early material. Another good example is the title Caliph. That didn't actually come about until the late 7th century. The early so-called caliphs were actually called commanders of the believers, as we see in Sunan Anasai. The much later traditions, when fully evolved, read all of this later material back onto those early formative years of Islam. And the Shahada, as we know it today, eventually evolved to there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. 
the so-called double shahada. Muslims also pray to Muhammad, at least if they follow his orders. Allah's Messenger taught me the prayer as he taught me a chapter from the Quran. Peace and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you, O Prophet. Notice this Muslim's response. We pray to God and we pray for Prophet Muhammad. Unbelievable. Oh, so you pray to God and for Muhammad. Someone's been watching too much Muhammad Ajab. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. For, not to the Prophet. For the Prophet. So let's get our prepositions right. You pray to God and for Muhammad. Back to the Hadith. Peace and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you, O Prophet. Who is the you? It's the Prophet. So who is the prayer to? The Prophet. But we've been told the prayer is to Allah. So let's correct Muhammad. Peace and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you, O Allah. No, wait, that's still not right. Let's try this. Peace and Muhammad's mercy and blessings be on you, O Allah. Now the prayer is to God and for Muhammad. Unfortunately, that explanation fails. The prepositions are correct. Muslims are commanded by Muhammad to pray to him. Peace and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you, O Prophet. Al-Misri is relevant here. He says one bows one's head at the tomb of Muhammad and summons to mind reverent awe and humility, then greets the prophet and blesses him in a normal voice, saying, Peace be upon you, O Messenger of Allah. Peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah. Peace be upon you, etc. Praying to a dead man. And don't even think about changing it because Allah's Messenger taught me the prayer as he taught me the Quran. Learning to pray to Muhammad is put on par with learning the Quran. And notice the Shahada in this Hadith. Here it is, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And notice that Muhammad is in this Shahada. That's a variation of the full Shahada, the double Shahada that developed during the late 7th century. So notice that this entire tradition, which claims to be during the lifetime of the prophet bears the earmarks of much later writing being read back into the time of Muhammad. Let's close this section of the video with a personal testimony. You see the identity is anonymous because this is an ex-Muslim still going through the motions of being a Muslim so he doesn't get killed. Having recently come back from Hajj, this person notes that in Medina the prophet's grave was passed by thousands who raised their hands just as they did the Kaaba. There's also an obligation to say greetings and a prayer for him. People also prayed to it outside. It completely blows the idea that Muhammad had always wanted people to view him as nothing more than a fellow human. So Muslims do pray for Muhammad and to Muhammad and even to his grave. Let's summarize this section of the video. There's the double shahada, which includes Muhammad, the veneration of Muhammad's grave like the Kaaba, and prayers to Muhammad even put on par with learning Quran. Now, what's the point of this section of the video? Well, it's all very strange given what the Quran says. About the prophets, we make no distinction between any of them. I like tables and graphs. They're just so easy for comparison, so let's do another one. According to the Quran, we make no distinction between any of the prophets. According to Muslims, we have the double shahada, which only includes Muhammad, and the veneration of Muhammad's grave and prayers to Muhammad. Conclusion, Islam is idolatry. Muslims have no problem contradicting their God to exalt their man. And now let's look at one more example the Quran claims over and over and over and over and over to affirm the Torah. So as we move from the veneration of a man to the veneration of an object, let's look at Deuteronomy 16.22. Do not erect a sacred stone, for these the Lord your God hates. <laughs> There is no comment required. Let's summarize. Muslims contradict their scripture if it exalts Muhammad. In the Quran, there are no signs. Muhammad is just a plain warner. According to Muslims, he has miraculous hand, spit, urine, and bowel movements. Both Muhammad and Allah have 99 names, and they share the title Praised One. The Quran makes no distinction between the messengers, but Muslims pray to Muhammad and even put learning his prayer on par with learning Quran. They venerate his grave and pray to it, and only Muhammad is in the double shahada. And of course, there's the veneration of an object with the black stone. 
Much could be added to this video, but we have to stop somewhere. I'll see you next time.